Well hello everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Reproductions. Good to be with everybody again today. And uh, we are in a new year. All kinds of stuff going on. Most of it uh, not good. They're like me. I was hoping to leave that all behind in uh, 2020. But this year uh, looks like it's going to be a colorful one too. But uh, all things aside, I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about what most of us, if you tune into this channel, are interested in and that is uh, living history and various aspects of that and I'm not going to get political so don't worry uh, there's lots of channels that cover those things I'm not going to do that I have a, an opinion on uh, current matters but that's not why you tune into this channel so I'm not going to go there but I just would like to say that uh, this past year uh, like many industries reenacting and living history have been various events hit pretty darn hard um, again not to get political but you hear the term a lot cancel culture and in our realm of reenacting and living history that has happened a lot this past year uh, not all but most of the events were canceled last year most of the big ones and that's not the uh, folks that put the events on fault. I know that uh, it's uh, various government institutions, state-run, you know, Department of Natural Resources just simply uh, won't write off on events and let them take place. So um, everyone is hopeful for this year. However, there have already been numerous uh, of large events that are thrown in the towel. Again, it's out of their hands. Um, many times the powers that be make it extremely difficult to have these events in light of the virus and uh, so they're having to throw the towel in unfortunately so what is the future I guess is what I want to say of reenacting and living history in 2021 well if uh, you're planning on engaging in reenactments and trade fairs and whatnot could be a little sketchy again this year like I said a lot of events are already saying uh, they're gonna cancel them again so what are we to do in the meantime? Well, uh, we've got to go to different avenues to keep this, uh, it's more than just a hobby, but it's a hobby to a lot of people. For people like me, it's our, our, our uh, I earn my living in this field. And uh, the first six months of this year, we saw our business slow to almost stop. It was just a little trickle coming in. So I would encourage everybody, continue to support uh, vendors and those that make their livings in this field this isn't a business pitch but in a sense I guess it is but at any rate uh, so we've got to look for different avenues in which to engage in this uh, hobby to keep it alive and one is to just simply go out as I'm gonna do on a period scout in the woods uh, most people know individuals that have attractive land where they will let you do this get all the cootered up go out on a scout or a uh, an overnight two three day camping trip or a hunt and don't be afraid to invite individuals that you're friends with and engage in this with them you know you can put together half a dozen or a dozen individuals even maybe set up a, a small reenactment what's called a hostile scout and uh, engage in a mock battle so for this year this may be the way that our hobby survives I'm hopeful but uh, the future is unknown so in the meantime, I would encourage everybody to look for different outlets in order to keep this hobby alive. So on um, this video today, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go on a scout back in the woods there. So I'd like you to just relax, try and tune out the modern world, and uh, join us as we enjoy the sights and sounds of the 18th century.
Alright, so we're at an old campsite here that I've used in the past. It's been quite a while. I'm going to go up and set a little fire ring up here. There's some rocks. And the property that I'm on here, we're really blessed to have it. It's uh, located in central Ohio. It's 40 acres that our church owns that's just adjacent to where we live. And then the neighbors around it, they own uh, many, many hundreds of acres. So you can get up in here and really feel uh, like you've unplugged, which is nice. Um, the uh, set of accoutrements I have, just in case you're curious, I've of course got my rifle with me. I've got the uh, powder horn and shot pouch to maintain it. Got my uh, canteen and haversack, just traveling light today. A couple of basic things, my fire starting kit. Uh, got my belt knife, my belt axe. Two linen shirts on, it is January, but it's quite warm out here today, so I don't need a whole lot more than that. Uh, wool waistcoat. I've got knee breeches on, uh, wool stockings, wool leggings, and uh, a pair of Fort Ligonier pattern moccasins, so, and tricorn. So, um, just the basics for today to have a little fun out in the woods. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, spruce up the fire ring, get a fire started. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get a fire going using my trusty flint and steel. I have not done this in quite a while, so hopefully I haven't forgotten how. I've got some uh, shredded grapevine that I gathered on the walk up here. Uh, this stuff is phenomenal for tinder. It burns long and hot, and it's a lot better than the uh, tow that you buy from various supply houses. So this is my preferred stuff. So I'll go ahead and give the old flint and steel a try. char cloth and I use just a I don't know if you can see that on camera but a simple little very small it's only about two and a half inch English striker copy of an original one from the early 1700s of course the winds in my face so this is probably a bad idea when the smoke starts well, we got a spark Alright, so I finally got my little fire going. It took me uh, another tip with the char cloth, but I got it. And uh, in the meantime, while that's coming to life, I brought my little tin boiler and cup. I'm going to go ahead and have a little cup of coffee. Coffee's already in there. Just add a little water. So, I've got my rifle, so I figured while this is boiling, might as well do a little shooting.
Well, it was a lot of fun to uh, burn some powder. I haven't done that in a while. And uh, get out and just enjoy the quietness and solitude of the woods. And the coffee's just about done, so I'm going to have a little sip before I call it quits. Sun's going down, so it's getting close to time to return to modern day life. Uh, but in closing, I would just encourage each one of you, if you're able to get out and do something like this, do it. Uh, you know, don't put it off till another day or when the powers that be decide it's safe for us all to come back out. Uh, find some private woods, find a state forest, something, and get out and engage in this hobby that is a uh, very rewarding one and one that I would highly recommend if you're new to this. So uh, until next time, thank you all for tuning in, and uh, we look forward to doing some more videos with you coming up here pretty soon. Take care, and so long.